So now I've gone ahead and finished tracking all of these six markers. So the next step is actually going ahead and finishing up with a solve. So to do that, I'll go ahead and add a camera solver. Now with the camera solver added, I, the first thing I want to enable is the exhaustive solve so that the computer goes ahead and can, tries to calculate uh, how exactly it can give me the best solve making use of each and every single difference in these uh, trackers. So once that is turned on, I only the other option I want to do uh, change is uh, change the focal length because I already know the exact focal length. I don't want the computer to calculate something which might be wrong and I'll hit solve. So it should take uh, no more than a minute to give you a solve. And one thing to note, the faster it solves, the more better the track is. So now it's gone ahead and solved. And as you can see, almost all the tracks are green in color. There are no red tracks as I scrub through. And if I go to the error section, you can see all of these are staying pretty much close to one, maximum is one, and uh, that's a pretty good solve. So there are no issues which are too major and I have a pretty good solve ready. Now the next step is as you can see the grid is not actually aligned to the footage itself. So if I hit play, you can see the grid is moving somewhere else. I want the grid to be placed somewhere close to these markers so that it's easier to see. So the way I'm going to do that for now, uh, temporarily, is select all the markers and I'll hit set origin. So the average position of all these markers are considered and that is set as actual origin. So there it's done. So now you can see the grid actually moves according to how the hand is moving. There are a couple of issues with what we have done. What we have now is actually a camera move. So if I switch over to my 3D view, you can see that it's actually the camera which is moving around the object which is set near the grid rather than the static camera and a moving object. So we have to still change this entire thing to make it look like the camera is static and the object is the one which is moving. Before I actually go ahead and do that, I want to set up my entire grid properly. So to do that, I'll go ahead and put on a new node called Orient Scene. So I'll go and set this up. And first thing I want to do is go ahead and set up the axes. I'll, uh, okay, I'll select these two points at the top and I'll give them to be the Z axis. So you can see the axis is pointing outwards. Now, next thing I can do is uh, edit. I'll uh, translate this whole grid downwards and I can look at it in the 3D view, exactly what's happening in the 3D view here. I'll move it so that it's adjusted exactly near these two points which I have here on the side. Okay, so that is done. So now, once that work is done, I want to rotate the entire grid so that it's oriented properly. As you can see now, if I come back to the translate, my y-axis is pointing downwards y-axis has to point upwards so therefore I just need to rotate the grid about a 90 degrees so I'll go ahead and just rotate that I go to a different frame where I can actually set the handle properly okay let's rotate that I'll just set it approximately to the yellow markers which I have on the side. It doesn't really matter how you set your grid. Uh, you can always reorient things when you are in your 3D package, Maya, Houdini, whichever one you choose. So now I have my entire thing oriented. I want to now set the entire scale of the scene. So if I come here to the bottom, you can see two grid lines here actually mean one centimeter. So if I come here, you can see almost this entire rod seems to be about um, uh, four centimeters in length and that's pretty much too small. So what I have to do is go ahead and select two points, these two points on the top and give the distance between them. So I can go ahead, select these two points. So which are these points? Yeah, tracker one and two and I'll give the distance between them. So the distance is 15 centimeters. I'll just press in 15 and enter. So as you can see, the grid just scaled down and these two markers are set at the right distance. I can go ahead, increase the scale of the grid and if you calculate, it will be exactly 15 centimeters in distance. So now this is done. Also, one last thing I can do is uh, move the grid to the center of the rod. So that pretty much takes care of everything. So I have my scene oriented, I have things done, but obviously still one of the major issues which is not yet solved is that I still have a camera move, not an object move. The way I'm going to do that, uh, edit this is um, I'm going to first create a static camera. 
the way you create a static camera here is by using an edit camera node. So I'll go ahead and create a edit camera node and connect it back to the same footage because I want to have the source uh, footage in the back end for this. Now with this edit camera, I have a few survey information uh, like uh, where exactly the camera was placed from the subject, how far it was, what was the height and such information I have already taken in. So I'll just go ahead and plug these in. So the camera was about a half a meter distance from the actual object. So I'll put in 50 on X axis and um, the height of the camera was just a little bit off the ground. So a little bit off the table basically. So let me give in about 20 there. And uh, if I come to my 3D view, you can see the camera is just off the grid. It's not looking at the center anymore. So let me give about 60 here to get it to the center. Okay, maybe 65. Okay, so you can see the grid is in the center now. So let me just increase the size of the grid so you can see better. You can see the camera is looking at the center of the grid now. So I've set that up. Next thing, I know the actual focal length of the camera is 50 because that is what was used. So I'll go and plug in the value 50. So this is my actual static camera. I have the camera. I have the movement of the object, but it's set in the camera movement now. I want to combine both of these together. The node I'm going to use to do that is called make object. So here I have make object node. I'll go ahead and open that up. As you can see, it has only two inputs. It has the first input, which is supposed to be for the camera. I'll go ahead, connect that in. And I have this orient scene, which is basically the object output, which I'm getting. I can go ahead and connect that into the make object again. So as soon as I do that, you can see what happens. Here on this grid, I now have this pink box with these dots, which are my tracking markers, and the box is moving, whereas the grid is entirely still. So let's go to the 3D view and see what's happening. So I have my camera here and almost at the center of my grid, which is uh, approximately the distance away from the camera, you have the object which is now moving. So literally I have almost everything done. Now, the only other thing I can do is uh, change the name of the group. Uh, instead of having it unnamed, I can give it a particular name. So let's say object OBJ, so that is done. So now, what exactly have I done here? First, I went about tracking the actual object, uh, all the markers I have, to tell the computer exactly which directions all the different elements are moving. Because the camera is not moving, it's completely static, I did not have to track anything in the background. Next, I went to the camera solver, solved this, I saw the error was very low. So once I have the camera solved, I went ahead, oriented the scene so that the grid is actually aligned according to the object and I also set the distance between these two markers which I already knew about so that the actual scale of this grid is correct. Now once both of these are done, I went ahead, created make object node where I connected a camera which I already plugged in with all the values of the real world camera and I have the final result. So now, once you have the final result, all you have to do is go ahead and export this. So this footage which I bought in, because of the 50 focal length, uh, there is not a lot of distortion, so I've not actually gone ahead and undistorted the footage. Also, the movement in this is very slow. It's not too fast. So therefore, there, is, there was no need of doing any shutter fix. So therefore, this footage would have to be shutter fixed and undistorted beforehand if you're doing anything which is uh, fast moving footage or a very low focal length footage. So if you have done any of those, you'll also have to export the footage itself. So now I've done all of this work. All I have to do is export. I will come to the make object node, put in an export node and just uh, set the location for where I want my object. You can set a uh, ASCII file or an FBX file, depends on exactly what your workflow is and export your scene. I'm a, a fan of both ASCII and FBX. You can export it to anything you want. I'll just export it to uh, ASCII file. So export succeeded. So pretty much all of my PF track work now is done. All I have to do now is go ahead, take this entire thing into Maya and start adding in the landscape itself. So next step is going into Maya and testing out exactly how our track is and creating a test geometry. So I'll see you there in the next section.